Well, if there's one thing we all know, it's New Zealand has a truly spectacular landscape. And take a look at this. This is the Bay of Plenty, one of the most prettiest places you'll ever find. It's right here on the North Island. But just down the hill here is something totally unexpected, a truly beautiful garden. Looking Glass Gardens is open to the public and was developed by Gail and Cedric Blameyers from a bland, difficult terrain. And over 25 years, it has transformed into a majestic multi-dimensional garden designed to have seasonally changing palettes of colour and texture. Gail is 73 years old and here's the remarkable thing. While Cedric, her husband, who is 80, mows the lawns and builds structures, Gail looks after the 20 acres of dedicated garden all by herself. Her knowledge of plants is remarkable, as is her collection, and what I find most humbling is her description of herself, a housewife and mother of six who likes to garden. Remarkable. One of Gail's favourite trees in the whole property is this one. It's an evergreen tree, but look at the trunk on this. Now, it's a member of the myrtle family, Myrtus Loomis, and it's known as the Temu tree. Now, this is one of those incredibly hardy plants. It does really well in dry climates, but incredibly well in wet climates like we've got here. They get about 1.4 metres of rainfall evenly over the year in this garden, but this tree here loves it. And look at the trunk, and as it's peeling away, you're getting that beautiful clear light bark underneath. It's just stunning. The garden is elevated and requires a certain level of fitness. It's situated 200 metres above sea level, nestled in the Papamoa Hills, overlooking Tepuki. The high point of this garden is nearly 100 metres above the Peter Pan Pond to the very top of the stairway to heaven. And whilst the climb may be hell for the leg muscles, the scenery from the top is well worth the effort. Get a load of the view. It always amazes me what people can create from what most of us would consider adverse conditions. It's a truly beautiful garden filled with whimsy. Statues and garden art are strategically positioned in different rooms across the garden. And the themes throughout the garden, like the box hedge, are fun and carefully thought out, leaving wonder at every turn. The garden features so many astounding plants and my visit is early spring, so the best is yet to come. The collections of magnolias, rhododendrons, flowering spring bulbs and flowering trees alive with birds are fantastic. Now this is one of those gardens you just want to walk through and find beautiful plants and you do everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's raining a little bit. This plant behind me is a stunner. It's about a 12, 14 metre tree at the moment. It's going to get a lot bigger than that. Across the property, there are literally hundreds of them. It's a member of the Magnolia family, a family of plants that's rare and endangered and quite ancient as well. This particular one is a Mycelia. Now, the species is unknown because it was collected as a seed from China and introduced to the garden many, many years ago. But one thing I've got to tell you is these pure white flowers, and it's an evergreen tree, by the way, but these pure white flowers, which smother the tree in the springtime, are heavenly fragrant. This would be a massive asset to anybody's garden. This garden is open to the public every day, but the Art and Garden Festival is an opportunity to see it alongside many of the most exclusive and private gardens in the region, open only once every two years. The festival director, John Beach, counts this as a highlight on the festival trail. John, this is an absolutely stunning garden, looking glass garden. It's got a great story behind it, 25 years in the making, and it's a major tourist attraction in this region these days too, isn't it? It sure is, Trevor. It's fantastic, actually. Uh, it's uh, one of my favourite gardens, and when we have visitors coming to the area, we make sure that Looking Glass Garden is definitely on their list to do. It's, it's a phenomenal garden. Brilliant. Tell me about the festival. How many gardens are actually going to be featured this year? There's actually 60 gardens on the trail. We've got 95 stops, uh, and that's combining art stops as well as garden stops. Yep. It's really a festival based on gardeners who love gardening, obviously, but they open up their private gardens to all our visitors. So yep. it's really an amazing um, trade-off between the love of gardens and supporting a community event, and we're so lucky. There's so many good ideas, and I'm sure a lot of people would visit purely for the ideas, the, the, the ability to learn. Absolutely. They come through and they get to get, be inspired 
inspired by what other people are doing. It's gardeners are artists, obviously, as you know, and it's just so fascinating and encouraging and, and inspirational when you get to see what other people are doing and they get those ideas, they take them home and hopefully um, develop them into something of their own. And for me, one of the things that I love the most about the Bay of Plenty is the food. It is just sensational. It's an amazing food culture here. Folks, you don't want to miss this. This is a terrific festival, a great opportunity to see into some truly amazing gardens. And if you can't make it this year, you need to pencil into your diary for 2016 when the next, next uh, art and garden festival occurs. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks,